After years of waiting, Marvel's Avengers is finally upon us. Does it nail the heroic landing it aims to achieve, or does it fall flat? My name is War with Horseman Gaming, and this is our review. Let's get into it. When it comes to an officially licensed product, there is a weight to certain properties that no matter what the aim of the project may have been, there are set expectations that simply cannot be shaken by consumers. It's no secret that Square Enix and the developers at Crystal Dynamics would have a massive hill to climb with their attempt to bring the spectacle of Marvel's superhero universe to the AAA video game medium. Following the overwhelming success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe that has enraptured fans since its debut in the mid-2000s, this would be no easy feat. Not only that, they set out to make a game that had a true Avenger storyline paired with a live service format to keep players hooked and playing for years to come. Does the final product deliver on such an ambitious undertaking? Well, it's complicated. In terms of story, the MCU took its time to build individual character development with multiple films before pulling the entire roster together for an Avengers level threat. Marvel's Avengers, however, foregoes this concept right from the outset and shows players that the Avengers are not only an already established team, but one that fans know the world over and celebrate. This leads players right into the opening of the game. Kamala Khan, future Miss Marvel and a young writer, along with a handful of other children, has submitted a short story to a writing contest in which the Avengers would judge on A-Day, a celebration of all things Avengers. This setup puts us in the shoes of Kamala as she nerds out over everything superhero related and comes face to face with her idols. There is a unique and very real charm to the opening of the campaign that cannot be understated. While definitely not groundbreaking by any means, it does a fantastic job of establishing Kamala as the main character in regards to the game's story and makes her someone that the player can immediately relate to and care about as she ascends to becoming a full-fledged Avenger herself. A lot of Marvel fans will likely buy this game specifically for the name alone, so throwing them into the shoes of a digital fan version of themselves was a smart decision. The events of A-Day inevitably go awry, and an evil organization takes over the world. This leaves it up to Kamala to help piece things back together. In terms of story, nothing additional will be spoiled here. The game starts strong and finishes the same way. There's a noticeable lull near the middle of the campaign, yet overall, the story is a solid tale that any Marvel fan can get behind. The campaign is far from perfect, however. For a $60 game with the official branding from Marvel attached, the main story is far too short. It took me less than 7 hours to complete all the main missions, even while playing on harder difficulties. With decades of comic book material this game had at its disposal, it could have easily tapped into more to extend the runtime in interesting ways. The story we're left with is good, though it's completely predictable and comes to a rather abrupt ending. While there are a few exciting plot moments, especially a potentially major reveal near the ending, most players will likely foresee the majority of the plot points coming long before they take place on screen. It is exciting that fans finally get a chance to feel like they're controlling an Avengers story for themselves in lieu of simply watching it play out on the big screen, but there simply should have been more offered here. Unfortunately, while the overall writing is solid, the game still falls into writing issues regarding Hulk. The Bruce Banner Hulk dynamic is one that writers have struggled to nail over the years, and this game is no exception. This iteration of Hulk is hands down the least likable character in regards to the story's plot, to the point that even many of his fellow Avengers seem to dislike him personally. Overall though, the story is a fun time that will leave you with a smile on your face, but leaving you a bit empty and wanting more narratively. One additional side note worth mentioning regarding the campaign is that though the majority of the story can be played multiplayer, this is not the case for the main campaign in its entirety. Players who purchase this game looking to play through the full story with one to three friends will be disappointed as several missions can only be completed alone. While this makes sense from a story perspective, this does not bode well for players coming from similar games such as Destiny where the entire story can be played in full with friends. This is a video game however, so the real question is, is it fun? The short answer is yes. Each individual Avenger falls into a set role and handles a bit differently from the other. This dynamic can make every option feel unique, yet the game keeps just enough similar between the cast in regards to control to make learning a new character inviting. Universally, A is jump, B is dodge, and each character has a light and heavy attack as well as three main abilities exclusive to their character. These special abilities are where each Avenger really branches off from one another and can be built onto further to master the player's style with an RPG-esque skill tree which players can continually build on as they level each individual hero. This typically makes combat feel great. There's a somewhat magical feeling that envelops an engagement. When you see Iron Man fly overhead, raining repulsors down, as Cap's shield bounces around the battlefield enemy to enemy, and Hulk smashes a group of robots while Thor materializes the Bifrost to eviscerate a four-legged tank, 
These are the moments where you feel like an Avenger, and where the game shines most. Gameplay is definitely not without flaws, however. Though the combat flow can feel almost magical at times when your team is taking down an army of enemies, other times you will be down by a low-level grunt that cheap shot you with a frost beam, causing you to wait on your squad mates to revive you. Oftentimes when this occurs, they will pay absolutely no attention to you at all, or continually sprint into an enemy's flamethrower until they too drop, causing you to reload the entire engagement. Make no mistake, the AI is not bad here by any means, but it can really only be relied on about 70% of the time. One additional note in regard to gameplay, while most of the time heroes feel unique, several of the characters come dangerously close to overlapping each other, such as Iron Man and Thor, or Cap and Black Widow. With that said, there are just enough differences on display here that none of them feel quite like direct copies of each other. This makes every option available one that will be fun to play with, regardless of who you choose. There are also some strange choices in the puzzle department. While it is a good thing that the developers decided to include additional tasks to divide up the combat, this solution is far from exciting. Scattered around every given map, you will discover things such as doors that only specific heroes can destroy, terminals that Black Widow or Iron Man can hack, or levers and switches to stand on to open a blast door for a chest or a shield agent inside. Also, certain objectives rely on video game staples such as defend the point or protect civilian missions. These tasks are often fast and easy distractions, but do little to add anything meaningful to the experience. There is also an odd assortment of enemy abilities that feel as though they were only included to annoy the player. Enemies are often equipped with cryo weapons that will freeze you in place, suppressing debuffs that will remove your ability to roll or use heroic abilities, and even clouds of toxic that remain on an enemy the entire fight that hurt you simply for being within striking range. These are strange choices in a game where nearly every character relies on melee combat as the primary focus. These decisions are puzzling and really break the flow of combat and take what are often fun engagements and turn them into chores. Complaints aside, the game is still fun to play, especially with friends. It's easy to see how once it gets its hooks in, it will keep players logging in for weeks to come. Now let's talk graphics and sound design. Since its first debut trailer, there has been a certain stigma to the look of the heroes. Once players are able to get past the fact that these are not the same versions of the heroes that appear on the big screen, this version of the Avengers looked pretty good and on par with what anyone would expect from a AAA studio to produce while remaining true to the source material. Some of the designs on display here are quite awesome and at no point while playing does the hero's character design take you out of the experience. The enemy design, however, is a different story. The word generic cannot be uttered enough here. Players will do battle against basic humanoid robots and hazard suited thugs for 95% of their time spent within the game. While there are different versions of each enemy, they never really break up the monotony of the standard bad guy that needs punched. This design issue bleeds over into the boss design as well. There are only six codex bosses within the entire game, though a seventh is technically secret and part of the reveal mentioned earlier. Worse still, only three of the six bosses are fully fleshed out Marvel supervillains. This is a huge missed opportunity and a disappointment for a game that aims to keep players hooked for years to come as a live service game. With so many humanoid robot type enemies, it's also very easy to lose some of the heroes like Iron Man in the shuffle of combat. Like all characters, Iron Man has several skins that make him blend in nearly flawlessly with the enemy factions, which can range from confusing to borderline frustrating when you're in the middle of combat. Level design is also a weak point of the game. Whereas other games in this genre have the advantage of being able to jump to specific planets in varied environments, here the Avengers are forced into the same few biomes. Wooded area, mountain range, snowy tundra, and underground tech lab are essentially the full extent of the arenas on offer here. And while none of them look bad, they do come across as bland and unexciting, especially on your 100th trip through the zone while completing the same handful of objectives. Sound design fares a little better. No AAA Avengers game would suffice without an all-star cast voicing these iconic roles. Crystal Dynamics pulled no punches here and brought in heavy hitters such as Laura Bailey, Nolan North, Jennifer Hale, and Troy Baker. Overall, the lines are delivered well, though Sandra Saad's Kamala Khan once again is the standout performance due to the nature of the story and the screen time awarded to her. Sound effects are also stellar here, whether it's the whine of Tony's repulsors heating up, the metallic ping of Cap's shield smacking off an enemy, or the crunch of Hulk's pounding fists slamming the ground and everything around, it all sounds good here. Some noticeable issues regarding sound are the sheer amount of times each character spurts out a one-liner. While Iron Man is the worst offender here due to his personality, he is definitely not the only guilty party. Thor is also somewhat of an oddity. His voice has a thick thespian flair to it, to the point that it starts to feel overdone. Mjolnir's sound effects also sound wrong. It became pretty clear early on that the sound of the legendary hammer smacking off foes was nothing more than a recording of a solid object smacking a basketball. Once that noise clicked, it never really sounded correct again.
One final note regarding design, the Destiny style cursor system does absolutely nothing positive here. The menu design is overly clunky to the point that simply navigating it or trying to just get back to one of the hub areas is initially confusing and convoluted. These types of things should have been far more streamlined in the final product and will hopefully be updated as the game finds its footing moving forward. As mentioned, this is a live service game, so the major question is how will it hold on to its audience for years to come? This is where the Avengers Initiative comes into play, the game's fully multiplayer mode that has you grind for gear and complete mission chains for in-game content. Unfortunately, in its current form, the goal of holding players long term simply may not be a reality. Currently, each of the six available characters, Miss Marvel, Hulk, Iron Man, Black Widow, Thor, and Captain America, all have 50 levels to achieve, a gear rating of 150 to earn, and a 40 tier challenge card to complete. There are also factions that can be leveled for additional resources and rewards. Leveling is simple enough, do missions to earn XP in order to expand your arsenal in regards to abilities and moves. It can be fun to see your hero progress and get stronger while learning new combos and tactics. The real issue is, at the end of the day most players will still only be using a few maneuvers that they have been using for hours, as the simple button inputs work perfectly fine without needing all the fancy combos. Any good game in this genre knows that the thing that truly keeps players hooked is the loot progression. Avengers is at a strange spot in this regard. Loot drops are frequent, and fall within the tried and true coloring system so that players immediately know when they've gotten an epic or legendary drop. The real issue here is that all the loot is just simply boring. The loot within the game is nothing more than a slight stat boost and perhaps a random perk. You will not physically see any update to your character or any real indication that you've equipped new gear. This frankly makes loot boring to grind for. One of the things other games in this genre like Destiny do best is show players that those rare weapons are worth grinding for. In those games, players can see each other in public spaces and ask themselves, what's that gun? I have to have it. And now they have a self-imposed goal in front of them. Once they finally acquire their newly coveted weapon, they can throw it on and not only visually see it on the screen, but immediately see how the acquired gear handles differently from their previous one. In Avengers, the joy of acquiring new items is boiled down to essentially nothing more than a stat bump. There are perks, but at the end of the day they will typically not alter those same few button combos you've been using for hours previously, and it robs the experience of what makes looting fun at its core. This directly ties into the challenge card presented for each hero. These cards are very similar to the season pass structure that has recently swept the gaming industry, but here you will need to do one for each individual character as opposed to the entire game. The 40 earnable levels take far too long to power through. This is likely a failsafe, as with any real season pass, the reason for their implementation is to gain additional money from the player. Tiers can be bought with hero credits, which can be purchased with real life currency at an exorbitant price. This is essentially a drop to zero system. Want 500 credits? Pay us $5. Need 20,000? Pay us $20. This continues all the way up to a $100 bundle. For a $60 product, this game simply should not be so greedy. Buried in the past are great things like player banners, resources for boosting character levels, emotes, and even hero costumes. Typically this wouldn't be a huge deal. If players wanted to spend money for these extra goodies, that's their choice. But when the loot system is structured in such a boring and bare bones way, this could have been easily avoided. For instance, level 6 of Iron Man's hero card has a rare skin named Epiphany. It's a bulkier costume and has noticeable exposed weak points and a classic feel to it. It's easy to see that this is perhaps one of Tony's earlier renditions of the Iron Man suit. Instead of bearing it in the hero card where it has absolutely no special attributes outside of being different looking cosmetically, this suit could have been a legendary drop that came with perks such as 40% additional melee damage at the cost of 10% damage increase from all incoming attacks, or 10% speed reduction due to the bulky size of its build. This would be an interesting stat trade-off players would have to consider while also rewarding them with a visual on screen of their newly looted item. It would give players more incentive to continually grind for this type of gear. It's a simple concept, but one that cannot be present in a game that would rather charge players for aesthetics alone. The reality is, if the game remained fun for longer and kept players grinding for these types of drops, they would inevitably be exposed to the game for longer, and there would be more long-term opportunities for the developers to gain money from the players if that was their only concern. Both parties would have been happier with the final product. It's a fun game players love spending time and grinding in, and the developers and publishers continually see money flowing in. This is perhaps the biggest missed opportunity of the entire experience. Lastly, we need to discuss glitches. While the game is not perfect, it handles noticeably better than it did during the beta version several weeks ago. 
While playing on Xbox One X in 4K, frame rate still takes a dive in certain instances, but it does seem the developers have the game in a much more stable spot overall. The game does still crash from time to time, and other strange oddities will pop up, such as not being able to use the attack buttons, enemy AI just standing around lifeless, or the camera deciding it wants to constantly do 360 spins while you're locked onto an enemy directly in front of you. The most reoccurring visual glitch players will encounter will be using takedowns on an opponent. Oftentimes, the hero will be standing several feet away from the enemy while slamming them around. While this does look strange, it does not negatively impact gameplay in any meaningful way. I also ran into a problem while recording footage for this video. At the beginning of the game, the very first objective would not load. I ended up having to completely delete the save data just to be able to complete the first objective. While obviously not a huge issue at the very start of the game, if an issue like this pops up later in the campaign, it could potentially set players back several hours of progress. With this game, there's a ton to cover, but at the end of the day, Marvel's Avengers is a strange beast. While it's definitely a fun experience, it's hard to fault players who will simply walk away from the game unsatisfied. The game is simply not the most polished shared world game, nor is it the best looter on the market. Everything the game attempts to do can be found in other games, and done in much more interesting ways. It's a game that's going to divide fans for sure, but one that has plenty of potential to expand and grow. There really is a fun foundation here, but only a few days after release, and it already feels like something more is needed to keep players logging on daily. There is a solid story here that any player can get excited for, and it'll be interesting to see how the story continues to add to itself over the lifespan of the game. Tackling an official Avengers game was a massive undertaking from the outset, but the team at Crystal Dynamics delivered a fantastic core experience in which to build upon. Grab three friends, become a hero, and a symbol for delightful chaos. We here at Horseman Gaming give Marvel's Avengers a 7 out of 10.